So here we are in front of my RD6, my TD3, and my other TD3. And uh, what I'm going to show you today is how to sync these up. Now, what we're trying to do is emulate a piece of software, believe it or not. Uh, back in the early 90s, Propellerhead Software, who is now Reason Studios, created a product called Rebirth. Rebirth was amazing. Uh, at the time, there was nothing that did what it did. It gave you software versions of the MC303, which was Roland's very well-known acid base. Back in the day, we couldn't get those anymore in the 90s. They weren't around. The ones that were around were expensive. Today, they're even more expensive for the originals. But anyway, we have a situation where we couldn't get them. So Propellerhead Software decided to create this product called Rebirth. Rebirth had two software emulated MC303s and also had an 808 drum kit. Now, I have the 808 uh, from... Behringer, but I'm just using, it fits better on this desk, the RD6. And also I said I was going to show how to hook the RD6 up to these guys. So we're just going that way. Uh, later on with uh, Rebirth, just to give a little more of the history, they eventually added the 909 to it. They had uh, cutoff filters. They had a, a digital effects unit and a little bit of a delay unit. And basically I'm going to show you how to do all that with what we got going on here, except for the delay unit, which we're gonna end up using, believe it or not, I don't actually have a physical delay unit. So when we get to that point, I'm gonna use uh, software versions of a delay unit in Reason with hardware versions or hardware on the table. So let's get into this here. All right, first, we need to hook these up so they sync together. In order to do that, you need one of these to be in charge. Now, I don't like the terminology technology uses of master slave. I've always hated that. So I'm going to go with parent and child. If you guys are cool with that, parent is in charge. Kids do what they're told. You get what I'm saying? All right. So here we go. Here's the parent. My parent is my drum machine. Coming out of the parent on the back here, you can see that I've got this cable right here coming out of the out on the MIDI. Well, that out cable goes to the in on this uh, TD3. Then I take an out from this TD3 and I go to the next TD3 and I go to its in. Okay, so you get the idea. So we go out to in, out to in. Pretty simple concept. So basically, whatever signal comes out of this MIDI here is going to get fed to this one. It's going to just pass right through to the next one. This will allow us to cue a clock off this synthesizer. And as the clock counts, that clock will be fed to these other two synthesizers and the timing will be kept. So now when I play the drum kit here, the uh, bass will start sounding on this one and the bass will start sounding on that one. Now, to hook these up to something, we needed some kind of audio system, an audio setup. So what I've got going on here is, rather than use a mixer, I decided to use my Native Instruments Complete 6. Now, this sound card is great. It has four analog outputs and four analog inputs, and has two digital in and outputs on it. I'm just using the analog ones for this particular project. What I've done is I've wired up each instrument to that white wire there, I'm pointing right to it, that white wire is going to be my drum kit. The yellow wire and the green wire, yellow is three and four is the green one. I'm gonna run the yellow wire to this TD3 and the green wire to that TD3. And that will let me have each instrument on a separate channel. Also, because of the way I set it up in Reason here, I've got three audio tracks and they're color coded. And the top one is my 606, my, my RD6. Uh, the second and third one is my silver and my red TD3. So here we go. I'm gonna get over here, I'm gonna hook up the audio and then we're gonna show you how the synchronization works. All right, I'm putting both TD3s on pattern one. I'm gonna put the RD6 on pattern one also. Now, what we need to do before we can do anything else is be sure that these are gonna sync up properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this, these two buttons right here, the one that says right next and pattern group together, and you'll see that all these lights come on. It will tell you what is going on with synchronization. 
Right now it says I'm internal on sync here and 48 points per quarter note. That's correct for this guy right here because this is the brain. It's telling everything else, hey, follow me. So he has his or she has her, whichever way you want to think of it, uh, rhythm set or clock set to internal. It's built in here. That's what I want for now. If I go over here and do the same thing, I'm going to hit the back button and the right button. Okay. Same same set of buttons. The controllers kind of look a lot like each other. Okay. I'm going to put this one on MIDI for sync. So I'm hit boom. Hope press both buttons. Hit MIDI. Same 48 points per quarter note. Um, and then we're going to do that again over here. Okay. Two buttons. I'm sorry. Two buttons. It's already set to MIDI and 48 points per quarter note. So this one's good to go. Now, here is where it gets crazy. What we need to do, uh, what I've got going on in reason for this to come through the speakers, just so you understand what I've got happening here, is I've created three audio tracks and I've put each of them on record mode and each of them on monitor mode. This is just a way to use reason kind of as a mixer uh, it's not really anything uh, that you need to know per se, but it's uh, it's you know good to know that these little tricks are there that you can kind of use your computer as a, a sub mixer or as a way to record multiple channels easily that way. Especially at the same time, where uh, when using Reason normally, it tries to tell make it seem like uh, you're only getting one channel to record on at a time because it, it kind of usually automatically jumps to the next channel and disables the channel you were on. This allows you to to bypass that and actually be able to record three channels at a time. Anyway, all right, so first what you wanna do is you wanna to go to each of the uh, synthesizers you don't want to play. In this case, I'm gonna turn off my 303s or my TD3s, turn down the volume, okay? And I'm gonna go over here to my RD6 and I'm gonna turn up the volume because when I start up, all I wanna hear is the drum. If I have those up and I press start, everything's gonna jump in at once and it's gonna be crazy. So what I'm doing here by doing this is um, controlling what instruments actually come through the playback at the same time. All right, I'm gonna hit start. So go over here to the left on the, the, uh, the brain, the RD6. I'm gonna hit start. Actually, I'm gonna record this too so I can add this to the You'll notice it's very slow. That's because the tempo on this RD6 is way down. I'm gonna turn that up. bring in some of these other synthesizers. You'll see that they're mapped right in. Ready? Ready? And now bring the other one. I can tweak these to my heart's content. Be like...
And that's pretty much it. Right now, we are able to synchronize the three synthesizers, my drum machine and two uh, TB3s, and we're able to play them together. That'd be all you'd really need for most live sets if you were doing acid music right here. Um, now, this could be changed up so that it could synchronize back into Reason if we wanted to go one step further and control our software synthesizers with our hardware synthesizers. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. So I hope you'll come back and check it out. Don't forget to leave me a comment below. If you like what you see in here and you're enjoying the video and the content, please like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.